Hello, it is Lee here from the Appalicious Teacher and today I am sharing with you a really fun math game, 101 and out. Um, this simple game is played um, either in pairs or in um, teams. It is for two students to play or for two teams to play. Um, you need dice, a writing utensil, and writing paper to document your math. Um, this game is perfect for building um, addition and number sense, and it's great for grades, I'm gonna say first through third, even fourth. Um, you could definitely have fifth grade play this, um, but no, it's more of just a fun game at that point instead of actually building a skill because a lot, by fifth grade, students really should be mentally able to fluently add two-digit numbers, which is what this game focuses on. All right, let me show you how to play. Okay, so like I said, the object of the game is to try to get to a close to 101 without going over. Um, to play, students will take turns rolling a dice. As they roll the dice, they can either take the number that is rolled as a one or a 10, and, um, and then they keep track of their adding in their column, and you take turns, team one, team two, or person one, person two. So let's play. All right, so first I'm gonna roll the dice. I roll four. My goal is to try to get to 101. So what's gonna make more sense to me to take this either as a four or a 40? Obviously, it'll probably be to take it as a 40 because that'll help me get closer to 100. Okay, roll it again. This is for team two. We got a six. We're probably gonna take that as a 60. Roll it again. Got a five for team one. And I'm gonna take that as a 50. And 40 plus 50 is 90. All right, let's see. Team two, 30. Six, 30 plus 60 is 90. We're getting so close. All right, now here's where we really have to problem solve. I'm at 90, my goal is to get to 101 without going over. So if I take this as a 30, I'm gonna go over my goal number. So this is where I need to get in and take it as a three. And now I'm at 93, whoop, two plus there. All right, team two rolled a four. Now they're at 94. Oh, team one took a four, and it's gonna make sense to take it as a four. So 97, so close. Five, oh. 99. And now um, this is where it can get tricky, and you can decide how to play. If a student rolls a number that they can't use, they can forfeit that turn. Um, because once they go over, they're out. So if you want to kind of keep the game going, you can do that. Or if they just roll a number, they have to take it. That's up to you, teacher discretion on that one. So team um, two rolled a two. So plus two, 99. <laughs> team two rolled a two plus two. And here we are at 101. Winner! So in this game, team two wins. And that is how you play 101. I'm gonna give you some teacher tips here um, just to kind of help the game go. Okay, some teacher tips for you while playing this game. First, but when you are introducing the game, work to do the game as a whole group first so that students really can hear and understand the thinking process that's going into this game. I love to just split the class down the middle into two teams. Um, you could also do it the class against the teacher. That's a really fun way. Um, but play together as a group first before you send students into partners or into small teams. And if you are going to do teams, make sure you have a pattern as to how students are going to be involved. Because what will happen in teams is you'll have hogs and logs, right? Hogs are students who want to do all the work and logs are the ones that just kind of want to be pushed along or rolled along and not really participate. And we really want to make sure that every student is participating and thinking during the game. So to 
offset that, a tip that I have for you is if you're going to play in teams, especially in teams of either, you know, two or four or, you know, seven in each group, however much, that you make sure that every student in their mind has the um, routine to actually come up with which number they should take and that every voice is heard in the team before a move is made on the board. So for example, while we were rolling the dice, there became a point where we rolled a three. Team one rolled a three. We were already at 90 at that point. And everyone on the team needed to agree that that three should be taken as a three and not a 30. Um, so you would teach your students that routine of everyone's going to have an answer and whatever the answer is, is for the group is the move that we're going to make. Um, so if you are playing this in teams, I suggest you keep the teams a little smaller so that you can move a little quickly. Um, but like I said, I've played this game um, whole group as a class before and just divided the students into two groups. I've also done teacher against the students. They love that one. Um, and in those cases, I, you know, make sure every student has an answer. It gives me a thumb up on what they're going to do. And then I select a student to share what they would do and then students do thumbs up and thumbs down if they agree with that choice. Um, so for example in the game I just played for our sample if this was a whole group game um, and team two had rolled that four after they already had 90 I would take a pause and I would say okay team you know team two or class <laughs> should we take this as a four or a 40 Every student would have to come up with their answer. Give me a thumb up once they have it. That's a great way to non-verbally let student or let the teacher know that they have their answer and they're ready. And then once you see all thumbs up from that side of the class or from your group, then you can go in and ask a student for their opinion. And if students agree, they could do heads. Um, if they disagree, you can do noses. And if they, you know, we're thinking the same thing, they can do shoulders. Um, a shoulder tap is a great way, a non-verbal way to say, hey, I agree. And once all the students agree, you can move on with the game. All right, that was a really fun game for you guys to play. Perfect for um, anytime you're doing an addition unit or you're trying to build mental math skills. Like I said, it's great for um, grades first through fourth, um, but you can totally play it in fifth. I loved playing this in my second and third grade room, so to me the sweet spot is there. Um, if you want this free card to reference for the game, um, you can click the link below me and grab it for yourself. It's free. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.